Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I've got something really fun for you. We are going to be spending the day with four star eventers, Kate Dennis and her mum Vicky Dennis here at Dennis Eventing. Let's head in. So today I am joining mother and daughter Vicky and Kate Dennis at their home where they produce and train their horses. Kate is currently competing at Four Star and has produced and competed many young horses and ponies, some of which we'll meet today. Vicky is now taking a step back from competing, instead focusing on training, and we'll also find out more about her passion for training and helping horses and riders throughout the day. But first, we need to rewind to 6am this morning when I arrived and was thrown into their daily routine, starting out with an early morning PT session, which I was absolutely thrilled about. You rotate around three times, so the first time around you have to go 4 50 seconds. Next time, George, are you doing it? Yeah. Get in. Yeah. Get in. Now we all know how important it is to be physically fit as a rider but when you're riding at four star level and eventing you really need to get that fitness up which is why the guys have a PT session two to three times a week which is a little bit crazy, I certainly don't so <laughs> we'll see how this goes but today we're here with AD Fitness and we're going to start by doing a little bit of a warm up so I've teamed up with Vic and we're going to start by running while the girls do some side steps. So by the end of the warm up I was already realising I really need to renew that gym membership because I am rather unfit, I was questioning my life decisions <laughs> at this point but now it's time for the hard bit and that is the circuits.
When your PT session also doubles as a horse's desensitization session, the horses here are so used to the weights being chucked around, skipping ropes in front of them, people running up and down the stables, they're really not bothered by any of it. Four, three, two, and four. Good, take a moment. Excellent, 50 round is done and dusted. Great work. And by this point, I was absolutely dying and managed to sneak off to um, discuss really important camera things with my photographer of the day, you know, Sam. So, uh, yeah, I made a quick disappearance before the end of the session for the guys to carry on without me. Um, but no, it was really good to do a PT session. I really do need to get back into the fitness. And it just shows the commitment, um, not just to the horse's welfare, but to their own fitness that you have to have to event and to ride at this level. So after a much needed cup of tea and a quick outfit change, it's back out to the stables to hay up the horses. So the first thing to do is to give all the horses that have been in overnight some hay for them to eat. And then we're gonna head out and bring some of the horses in from the fields that are going to be ridden today. So which one's this? Uh, this is Spider, she's still unbroken. Oh. So I'm gonna break her this winter. Oh, excellent. Um, this one's Ophelia, she's one of them. Oh, yeah, she went to Washington. Yeah. She's really nice. Probably should come Yeah, she did really well, didn't she? Yeah. Mm. And then that's Dorothy. I recognise that. Who's that? She's gorgeous. Oh, beauty. Mm. Oh, you're very sweet. Yeah, cute. I can't believe how dark it is. So here at Dennis Venting they have lots of horses and I thought I had a lot. They have everything from their homebred foals up to their four star eventers and everything in between. As well as their own they also do sales livery, schooling livery, rehab, they have a lot of horses here and as well as doing all of that they also have a cross-country hire and um, so if you are in the Ripon area and you're looking for a fabulous cross-country then the links will be in the description box below so today we're bringing up the lovely Elia and another youngster who are coming in to be worked <laughs> so once the horses are in it's time to write on the board who's getting ridden and what they're doing and i even made it to the board which means that i will be riding someone later on but first up, it is Darcy's turn. So this is the wonderful Darcy. I must admit, I am absolutely in love with this little mare. Um, so she's actually a homebred and she is four years old. So Darcy hasn't actually been on saddle that long, but she did go from being broken to doing her first BE90 in just three months. Um, and Vicky was telling me how all of their homebreds just seem so level-headed and just take everything in their stride that they're able to progress quite quickly with them. They always work at the horse's pace, what they're happy with, both physically and mentally, yeah. which is a huge part of the Dennis Eventing approach. So today they're working on some grid work. So we started off by doing lots of poles first and then Vicky popped a few jumps up for Darcy to head over. Would you believe this mare hasn't even been jumping that long, um, but she's got a cracking little jump on her, as you'll see in a moment.
And on the way back to the stables, I got to meet the youngest member of Dennis Eventing, the lovely Daisy, who informed me she doesn't think she'll take after her sisters and be an eventer. Instead, she's planning to be a doctor. So next up for Kate to ride is Ophelia. Ophelia is also a homebred and she is also four years old. She's at a very similar stage to Darcy, so they're going to be doing the same grid work with her today. best friend didn't care about the rules good on the weekends i'll be in fools drifting the deep space so brave and so stupid just like the movies how it's gonna stay in the fight with you just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it each and every high every night with you you and me so clueless Then it was time for a quick lunch break and plenty of cups of tea, and then on to more horse riding. So now we're going to take some of the mares out for a hack. So meet my lovely ride. This is Topsy. So Topsy is here at Dennis Eventing because she's come on sales livery. So she's been in um, a couple of months now for schooling and now she's up for sale. So Topsy is a 16-2 bay mare if you hadn't guessed um, and up to now she's done some unaffiliated competitions, eventing, show jumping, combined training um, and she's proving really very smart at all of them. She's doing a nice dressage test and I've been told she's a very sweet and straightforward mare which is just the sort of thing I like to ride so we will see how well behaved she is on today's hack but I'm sure she'll be an absolute gem. Yeah. I know it's so, so scary. <laughs> Spooking at you, Sam. <laughs> so we had a lovely hack and on the way home, the weather really just started to change. It had been drizzly all morning, but it really started to throw it down. But there were still horses to ride. So the next for Kate to ride is Elliot. Now Elliot, they've had a few years. They got him as a three-year-old out of racing and he is now being produced to be an eventer. But poor Kay, it was absolutely chucking it down by this point, but there's no fair weather riders around here.
guys, while it is absolutely chucking it down outside, we're going to hide in the tack room. And Vic's going to tell us a bit about Equity Aid, her product. So I actually met Vic for the very first time at my riding club camp. Um, so I went and did a demo in this product, and she's going to tell us a little bit about it today. So what made you create this? So basically, I was, I've was i rehabbed a lot of horses, um, behavioural issues, so-called behavioural issues that are mostly physical problems. Um, and I, I've ridden quite a lot of difficult, tricky horses and trained them. And what I found was that when I wanted to introduce a new rider, the rider and the horse were in a bad place and a, um, probably physically in a bad place, both of them. So I designed the CA because I was really struggling with especially one of my clients who every single horse she brought to me had exactly the same pattern. Yeah. It wouldn't bend to the left, was exaggerated, bend to the right, curling all the time on the right rein. And when I looked at her, I knew what I needed to do, but I couldn't support her. So it didn't matter how many times I told her that that we, you know, she basically had to open her left thigh, take her left knee away, engage her, le her left seat bone. She physically wasn't capable of being able to do that. So I invented the seat aid predominantly for her because yeah. she'd been coming for lessons for three years. The pattern, I was really struggling as a trainer to break those patterns. I would get on a horses and they would go really well for me, but I was more aware and probably more capable of, of using my body weight in a different way. Although... I still have limitations that the seat aid has massively helped me with. Um, and so basically that's how it was born. So, so that physical support just put her where she needed to be that she, needed she needed wasn't to be. capable of. And the problem, the problem that I, I had was keeping people there. So if I taught them and I said to them, right, you're dropping off to the right. So in the half an hour session that we had, they would be able to hold it. But as yeah. soon as I sent them away... They forgot where straight the was. Back. They didn't know. The horse is weaker on that side anyway, so it's always naturally going to want to drop you that way because it's already lost muscle and it's already compromised its way of going yeah. to avoid the rider, basically. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was basically it. A lot of hind leg lameness is, is rider-related. In fact, probably a lot more than we really want to admit. Yeah. And... That was another thing that spurred me on. You know, I'd seen a lot of horses that I was unable to probably mend because of the length of time that they'd been ridden in a prolonged, compromised place because the riders weren't straight. We'd just done some preliminary clinical trials with a, a rider rehab um, physio, and um, she was very cynical about the product and was like, you know, how is this going to work? She's a rider that's had a couple of injuries, ankle injury and and various other ones. Mm. And um, she went away and rode in it and she could not believe the difference it made to her horse. She literally said, when I put it on, I didn't think I was gonna be able to ride on it, it was too bulky. By the time I'd ridden to the arena, I didn't even know I had it on. And she said, I think it was left canter. She said, for the first time, my horse just went straight into left canter and was much more balanced. She said, I could feel an immediate difference. Now, those immediate differences don't always last. So the next day, if you rode in one, you might feel my horse is a little bit resistant to it. But you've got to think, for the first time, that horse has used those muscles in a certain way. It's something that you've got to stick with. But after our preliminary trials, basically, we, we measured the riders without the horse. So there was no influence from the horse. There was no saddle flipping. There was no you know, one-sidedness from the horse. We measured them completely away from the horse um, on a pressure pad. And we measured what their legs could do, what power they had in what leg, and which side was the weakest. And it correlated exactly to what they did on the ridden work. Yeah. So when I put it yeah. on the horses, you could see a massive difference. Yeah. And um, then they came back after three weeks, which is not very long, is it? No, it's not very not long. long. <laughs> so they came back after three weeks, and both riders had changed completely which side there was their strong and their weak leg. So the seat aid basically does two things. It disengages the stronger leg. So when we grip, we will take that seat bone out yeah. and we'll slightly twist, which will make our horses bend one like So I... I do it to the, I do it the same way as you. Yeah, to that So way. we always want to turn right. We yeah. find going right much easier than going left. And, um, and basically we found that it, what it did was it gave the weaker leg a chance to catch up. Yeah. 
I'm going to show you now how you put this on um, and give you a bit of a demonstration. So on your dominant leg, just place both blocks to the front and back of the inside of your thigh, just above the knee, and then it simply Velcros in place. When it's brand new, it will be a little bit tighter to put on, but there you go. So I'm actually going to be riding and training for the next six weeks in the Equisite Aid and I'll share with you all my results as I go along um, and we'll see how I get on and whether my saddle stops slipping. But for now, it's time to move on to the next part of the daily routine and that is evening stables. Around, take all the out. Yep. Tidy the beds up. Make sure everyone's got plenty of payage. We're just putting these stables, because we've still got quite a lot out in the field. Yeah, so we're just putting these stables right for tomorrow, basically. So they're ready, ready for the horses to just come in. Now we all know I'm most at home, either in the saddle or with a fork in my hand. So I was very quick to muck in and help muck out all the stables for the horses coming in tomorrow to be worked. Because as we know, there's lots of horses here at Dennis Eventing, both their own horses and those here on sales livery or schooling livery. So it's all hands on deck to get everything ready for tomorrow. had such a good time with Dennis Eventing. A massive thank you to them for having me today. All the links to their website and socials will be down below. And I will see you all next week for another video. Bye guys. Everyone loves the fur headband. I know. Just go there, thank you.